A lot of people are excited about the Canon EOS R and we've been doing a lot of testing on it. We're still getting ready for a full review. But in the meantime, I wanted to give you a peek at our image quality tests and the results so far. We tested against all the comparable cameras, the 5D Mark IV, the Canon EOS 6D Mark II, the A7 III, the A7 R III. So let's get into how it compares. First up, against its very close cousin, the 5D Mark IV, the two share the same sensor, according to Canon, with almost no difference. Now, the guys at Canon said that the image processing on the Canon EOS R should be a little bit better. We did not find this in our testing. The images were essentially indistinguishable at low ISO, at high ISO, with one difference. The dynamic range on the EOS R is a little bit worse. These pictures have been recovered about five and a half stops. Note that the color is off on both of them. They're both way too cool. But on the Canon EOS R, notice the green and magenta bands that appear throughout the image. This was pervasive on any picture that had the recovered shadows. You can see these same bands do not appear in the 5D Mark IV photos. This could be related to how the data is read from the sensor or from changing the phase detect autofocus system on the sensor. Recovering an underexposed photo on the Canon EOS R at ISO 6400 also revealed the same uncomfortable picture ruining banding. To identify the situations in which banding occurs, I took a series of photos using different settings of just a blank wall. Raising the exposure about three stops, you can start to see it at four stops, it's quite obvious, and for five stops, it's really upsetting. This occurs with a mechanical shutter and electronic shutter at fast shutter speeds and at slower shutter speeds like 1 1 25th. It occurs with LEDs and with natural lights. I cannot find any way to prevent it from happening. This would definitely appear in your images if you needed to recover shadows in say dark hair or dark suits like a wedding photographer would. However, in normal everyday shooting well exposed images, it's no problem at all. So how does it compare against its close cousin, the 6D Mark II? If you're a hybrid shooter switching stills and videos, you might be using the 6D Mark II. The EOS R is significantly better. The image quality is just better. It has more megapixels and everything does indeed seem to be a little bit sharper. On a properly exposed ISO 6400 picture, the difference is not noticeable until you zoom in. Here we can see just a little less noise on the Canon EOS R. Biggest difference is with the dynamic range. If you have to recover your shadows, if you sometimes underexpose shots and you're shooting raw, if you pull those shadows up, they're gonna look much better on the EOS R than they do on the 6D Mark II. Here you can see recovering five and a half stops reveals that the Canon EOS R has far better dynamic range. Even at a glance, it looks way better than the 6D Mark II. But zoom in and you can see it's cleaner, clearer, and sharper. By the way, if you want to win an EOS R camera, head to freesdp.com and you can just get one for free. Let's get into the mirrorless competition, the A7 III. By the way, thanks to Lens Rentals for loaning me the A7 III and the 6D Mark II. If you want to check any of this out, bodies or lenses, check the link in the description down below and they can rent something to you quickly and easily. This is a really tough one to call. The A7 III from Sony is two grand compared to $2,300 here. Uh, it has 24 megapixels while the Canon has 30 megapixels and indeed the Canon images were noticeably sharper. Those extra megapixels do count for something. They can both be adapted to Canon lenses. However, the EOS R adapts native Canon, adapts the EOS F, EF DSLR lenses perfectly fine. You really don't notice any difference in focusing between the native and adapted lenses. Whereas with the Sony, the, there's a significant penalty in autofocus time using either the Sigma or the Metabones adapter when using Canon glass. So if you have a big library of Canon glass you want to use, the EOS R is definitely the better camera for it. Other than the extra megapixels, the Sony a7 III wins the image quality in most other ways. The shadows recovered look much, much better. Comparing photos recovered five and a half stops, we can see strange banding like this red line that appears in the bricks here that of course doesn't actually exist. And these green lines, which are in the Canon EOS R photo, but not in the A7 Mark III photo. 
but the extra sharpness from the Canon EOS R is still apparent. Higher ISO is a little bit cleaner, but because you do have some extra detail on the EOS R, you are able to trade some of that extra noise uh, for the extra detail. So you can just increase the noise reduction and you lose some of the detail, but you have some to spare. So it kind of ends up being a wash. Properly exposed photos at ISO 6400, we don't see a difference at this scale. However, if we zoom in, we can see that the Canon EOS R actually looks a little bit better. It's a little bit sharper, though not quite as clean. Also notice the magenta and green fringing on the Canon EOS R in high contrast areas that don't appear on the Sony A7 Mark III. This is probably moiré caused by a fairly weak anti-aliasing filter. Here in this specific graphic example, it's actually benefiting the A7 III, though it will overall reduce sharpness. For our purposes, we generally prefer to fix moiré manually in post than to give up sharpness on all our images. This is a closer competition than I expected. The Canon seems to actually have better image quality than the Sony a7 III. But there's another Sony, the Sony a7 R3. And I know a lot of you are like, why would you dare compare that? You can't compare, I can, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> the a7 R3 is normally three grand new, which means it's more expensive than the $2,300 Canon EOS R, but because there are so few lenses for the Canon EOS R system right now, you pretty much have to buy yourself an adapter, and that means the camera now costs about $2,500, and the a7R III sells used for $2,600 regularly. So they're actually pretty close in price. The a7R III is 42 megapixels, and indeed, that blows away the 30 megapixels on the Canon EOS R. Especially for dynamic range, recovered shadows are going to look much better. At higher ISO, it looks much better. So it's sharper and pretty much better in every measurable way as far as just image quality goes. Zooming in on a properly exposed photo at the base ISO, we can see the A7R 3 produces both cleaner and sharper images due to the higher megapixel count. On high contrast graphic parts of the image, we can see the moiré from the A7R 3 is pretty severe as it is with the Canon EOS R. On a photo underexposed by five stops and then recovered, even without zooming in, you can see the A7R III's recovered photos are vastly better. Look at the green and magenta banding still present on the Canon EOS R. If we zoom in, not only are the colors better, but the noise is greatly reduced too. The A7R III has a stabilized sensor and it uses that to do pixel shift where it stacks four images together that means you have to use a tripod, it means there's a little extra post-processing, it's a little bit of a pain, but if you're doing especially still life images, it dramatically increases the sharpness and pretty much eliminates noise, and that meant that those images were significantly better than anything you could get out of the Canon EOS R. We can see the Sony completely eliminates the moiré, making technically perfect pictures for still life images. Look how much cleaner the pixel shifted images are than the Canon EOS R can produce. So in summary, the image quality on the Canon EOS R is excellent. Canon took the sensor from their high-end 5D Mark IV and stuck it in a $2,300 body. And that's actually a really good deal at this price point. If it costs as much as uh, a Nikon Z7, I wouldn't be so optimistic about it but the image quality is really good. And most people are generally going to be happy with it. And in fact, I think it's better than the A7 III because of the fewer megapixels. It has lots of other weaknesses and strengths and we will cover those in our full review. So before you pre-order anything, maybe just wait a little bit, subscribe and wait for those videos to come out. Also again, freesdp.com if you decide you'd rather just win one of these for free. Oh, and for those who are wondering about the Nikon Z7, Z6 and Fuji X-T3, yes, those reviews are coming. Our Nikon camera should be here any day now, same with the X-T3. So subscribe and sit tight. We're not ignoring those manufacturers. We just don't yet have the cameras in our hands. Thanks again to Lens Rentals. Bye.